time had come for work experience, all of the pupils in the class would be going out into the real world and trying out a job for a few days. Animal keeper at the local zoo. Linda, TV star. Tess, chocolate factory. Jerry, forest warden. The three friends had no great expectations. Frank, Thomas and Eric, PE teachers. Angela, manager. It immediately hit the three friends that work experience with the PE teacher was a mission that would seriously put their lives at risk. Only yesterday, the PE teacher was rumored to have killed a pupil who, after a challenging exercise, had vomited all over his shoes. To have some chance of surviving the next day, they decided to ask Jerry for advice. What are we going to do? We don't want to die. My dad is no problem, said Jerry, who decided to get all of his advice from a book of rules for knights from the Middle Ages. He just changed the word king and replaced it with P.E. teacher. When the P.E. teacher addressed thee, thou shalt bow to thy knees and touch the ground with thine head. Thou shalt never turn thine back to the P.E. teacher. Instead, uh, uh, he who bestoweth honor and glory on the P.E. teacher shall be richly rewarded. He that doth not follow the path of righteousness, but instead followeth the path that leadeth astray, he shall stand without mercy when the Lord's wrath is upon him. Thou shalt be consumed with fire in the burning Gehenna. Steve, put that plan away and get over here for a second. Stop playing around. Get up. Yes, Master. The PE teacher took feather-light steps in his new Spike Air outdoor terrain extra power trainers. The three friends stared at them in horror. They knew what terrible reality hid behind the change of shoes. I hope you can manage a compass and map. Yes, Master. Master. Now you hang them up numerically, one at every control. It's an important day, the selection for the school district championships in orienteering. And don't you forget it! Yes, Master. Good. You'll find the correct locations for the shields on the maps over there. Up here from the tower, we can quickly detect fires and other accidents. Yes. And here, you have the emergency telephone. Yes. I hope you understand that this job takes 100% concentration. Yes, yes, I do. You're sure you can cope with this? Yes, yes, I'm sure. They were still alive, and the PE teacher had even said good. The three friends threw themselves into their task with the greatest enthusiasm. It's a cinch right through there, you know. This is so easy. Or maybe... Dave, where's the plan of the drainage system? Don't know. I put it here on the table. There was something which didn't quite make sense. Even though Frank had read their way through the forest by the map, millimeter by millimeter. Does anyone see a shower cubicle? Remember the places on the district team that taste of blood in your mouths. The honor of the school. That's what it's all about. Ready, steady, go. Now we're on the right track. That must be the field, said Frank, and walked straight into a swamp. Ah! Help! 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 A swamp? Wow! Amazing! It can be sucked down and buried alive. Ah! Oh, wow. Frank sank even deeper in the swamp, but Thomas and Eric managed to save him before it was too late. I wonder why it says. Drainage System Forest Cottage Leisure Center on the map. At the fall of darkness, the three friends and all of the orienteers were still missing. Their parents started to get worried. Very worried. <laughs> we'll spread out in a line with a distance of 10 meters between us. We're looking for 267 children in sportswear and three work experienced pupils from junior school. Here's that understood! After a long while of wandering aimlessly in the increasingly difficult terrain, the three friends were forced to realize that they had got lost! Lost. 
there's no mercy. Run! Otherwise, we're gonna be barbecued! Stay where you are. You are going to the rescue. Are you totally out of your mind, kid? The entire forest is about to burn down! Stupid bungler! Just you wait! Calling off units. Forest fire has When the helicopter landed in the starting area, the search party had managed to find most of the kids. Everyone but the three friends. But thanks to the PE teacher's heroic effort, they had been saved too. If saved was the right word. They realized that they didn't have many minutes left to live. Well, actually, Eric didn't realize anything because the helicopter ride had made him very airsick. The first blow of total annihilation was just about to fall when the three friends were saved by pure luck. Oh. I stand here with the hero of the evening, a brave P.E. teacher who, at the risk of his own life, rescued three small children. Sure. He'll be famous, said Thomas, and instantaneously they remembered Jerry's prophetic words. He who bestoweth honor and glory on the P.E. teacher shall be richly rewarded. We'll be rich! Stop! Stop, I said! You think we'll get money or golden diamonds? <coughs> Frank and Thomas didn't wait for the PE teacher's reaction. They ran back into the forest and hid themselves. Frank's dad had a few things to do in town, and the three friends and Jerry had been allowed to come with him. Here's Super TV. This is where they broadcast derision and degradation with Sorry Zagreb from. Really? Sorry Zagreb? He's the best. Hey, check this out. Said Jerry, who had spotted a notice which announced that Super TV were looking for kids between 8 and 12 for a new game show. Leave your application here. We have to do it, guys. We're going to be stars. There will be thousands of people applying. You don't have a chance. Our chances are as big as anyone else's. Bigger. My face will make an indeliable impression on people all over the country. <sighs> You've got mail, Frank. Wow! From Super TV! Cried Frank and eagerly tore the envelope open. Yes! I made it! They picked me! Not only had he been selected, but the program was to be shown on his birthday. That must be a sign, thought Frank. This had to be the beginning of something big. Frank wasn't the only one who'd received a letter from Super TV. Thomas, Eric and Jerry had also been selected. Congratulations, Frank. Gee, how fun. Congratulations, guys. I'm sure you will all be stars. Imagine being on TV. It wasn't long before their lives were completely changed. This sucks. We don't have enough even for the cheapest popsicle. Have an ice cream, guys. It's on me. <gasps> it was like someone had touched them with a magic wand. Around me. <laughs> You know that my new Aqua Funland opens next week, don't you? If you drop by my place, I'll get you free lifetime passes. Wow! Here come the TV stars! Hey, look at this. You can almost see that Frank and I are going out. Oh. It was only a matter of time until they received their first Academy Award. I would like to thank my father for taking us into town that day where I saw that Super TV poster ad and applied for the show. This was undoubtedly the happiest day of Frank's life. In the morning, he received his birthday cake and presents, and then he was off to appear in the TV show that would make him famous throughout the whole country, perhaps even the whole world. 
when it was time for them to leave for the TV studio, the hysteria had spread throughout the community. Relatives, friends and people they had never seen before had gathered to wish them luck. The boys were very keen to get inside in time for the start of the show. Are we on now? Is it our turn? <laughs> I don't really know how to say this, but unfortunately, it seems like we have too many children here tonight. <laughs> Just tell us what to do. We are ready. That's nice, but I'm afraid you won't be on the show. <laughs> Not at all. There are just too many children. I'm sorry, but we really won't need you. <laughs> Welcome to the first night of Barking Up the Wrong Tree. Children from all over the country have come here to compete for a variety of all kinds of stunning awards. Uh, dates with supermodels, an evening with David Copperfield. Too bad that it collides with derision and degradation. Look, we're going to watch Frank and the guys. Right, well, we can switch channels later. Frank could see no way out but to stay in town and find a refuge in the sewers. No way was he going back to face the derision and degradation at home. Did he get to be on the show, Frank? We told you so. Of course they wouldn't pick you. Crisis! We have a crisis situation. I need a substitute! Derision and degradation had been struck by a last-minute cancellation, and now sorry Zagreb had to fill the gap. Anybody. Anything. It didn't matter. Take me! Take me! I can do it! Take me! Sorry! Take me! One. Take I me, just need me. one. They quickly agreed that it should be decided by drawing sticks. I won! I'm on! Ah, ah. Is this what you call a birthday? This is the worst birthday in the whole world. My worst day ever. Jerry fell silent and looked at Frank. After a moment of hard inner struggle, he opened his mouth. Frank, you can go instead. After all, it's your birthday. Really? Yes. A fine moment between two friends. What a moron. Yes, I'm on, I'm on. I'll be a star on Sorry Zagreb show. You see, it's hurry up now. First, Frank had to get changed. There was no time to lose. But when Frank got to meet Derision and Degradation's no, fiendish no, producer... No, I refuse. Did I hear, uh... No. He quickly forgot about his objections. I can't understand why they're not on the show. Let's change channels. Welcome back to Derision and Degradation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we will be visited by a real country bumpkin who is prepared to do anything for a few minutes in the limelight. Frank, please give him a big hand. I am Stevie Stork. My head is made of cork. I am Stevie Stork. My head is made of cork. Frank is this guy's name. Frank, Frank, Frank. Yes, yes, yes. Back home in the three friends' little village, the inhabitants were united in a cruel laughter. <laughs> you two are going out, right? What? Oh, don't be an idiot. The highlight of the night. You really saved me, kid. And here's your pay. But since the program is called Derision and Degradation, I'll give the money to your buddy here. Wow! Look, Frank, look! Frank, look! Oh, I am Stevie Sword. My, My head is made, made of cork. Frank had been right. Starring on Super TV really had been the beginning of something big. <laughs> yes, this is me when I was a little girl. And for tomorrow I would like all of you to bring photos of yourselves from when you were little. I'm sure we can find a nice photo in here, said Linda's mum, who had taken out the album with the pictures of all the beauty contests Linda had taken part in. Is that me? Yes, look how cute you are. That's Miss Baby 89. And look here, you're so beautiful, you're really beaming. I know. Sighed Linda, full of admiration for herself as she proudly ran her eyes over all her prizes. 
Frank took the assignment very seriously. Frank had no intention of letting anyone see him wearing diapers or with peanut butter spread all over his face. No, Frank had a much better idea. Jerry, you had curly hair when you were a baby. Oh, they're going to make fun of me. Over a photo taken eight years ago? I really don't think so. This one is from the only competition you didn't win. And look, there's me. I have to say I didn't look that bad myself eight years ago. We've got it all on video. Uncle Ben was there filming. What do you say? Should we take a look? Wouldn't that be fun? Why? I didn't win, did I? No, but still, it would be fun. I can't understand why you didn't win. And we drove over 100 kilometers to that contest. There was something strange about the whole thing. Some ugly little girl won it, said Linda's mum, and pressed the remote control. Ha! Look there! But what about this one, then? Hair of the year. I'm sorry, that contest is for girls only. Mrs. Anderson, how nice. And little Joe. Let's see, hair of the year. The line over there, please. That was no girl. It isn't easy to tell the differences at that age. While Frank's mum desperately tried to get him into one of the contests, little Frank went on an expedition and crawled straight into a dog show. Ah, the judges are over there. Ah, hey, watch, watch out. out. Take it easy. Make way. The chairman of the jury was none other than Vicious Oscar, who was at that time still a respectable member of the community. I am so delighted that you could do this. It means a lot to have a chairman of the jury with such a solid past in show business. The pleasure is entirely mine. Has anyone seen my glasses? I'm sure we can find a nice photo. Linda's mum worked hard on softening up the judges. There was no obvious winner among the many contestants, but then it was Linda's turn. Green sleeves now for well a joke, God I pray to prosper thee, for I am still the lover true, come once again and love me. Come on now. No, I don't. No, I don't. Is it time for the wire haired braids already? Obviously. This must be the pit bull terrier. Linda was fantastic. It would take something really exceptional to beat her. Over there. Now, now, to the left. Roy Johnson, who was always there for his daughter, decided to leave nothing to chance. To the left. Can't you see her? Yes, 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 yes. There. Yes. Frank. Frank. Shh. You better be careful with this one. My old friend Zeke got bit on the hand by a pit bull terrier. The only way to get it off was to chop off his hand. Now we call him <laughs> Zeke with the stump. When we met down the pub, we, we, we say, here, here comes Zeke. We, we the Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the chairman of the jury to crown the winner of this year's Young Beauty Contest. The sly little rat. I'll oh, show him. <laughs> Me and get 
gets away with it. Got that, you ready, bribe taker. I'll get you. There was something strange about the group of them. I mean, the kid who won looked positively weird. Complained Linda's mum, but she soon had other things to think about. I will take this to the highest authority. Give the thing to me. Give it to me, Linda. Give it the remote control at once. Take it easy. One at a time. No fighting. Anyone can see that it isn't you. Yeah. You can't play guitar. Check this out. Look at Frank. <laughs> he looks totally gross. What a sight. <laughs> then I think we're done. Let's see. No, not yet. Jerry, hurry up and put your picture up. Oh, all right. Mumbled Jerry and slowly walked up to the others. Oh, what? You? 